NAFTA stands for the North American Free Trade Agreement, a pact signed by Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to create a trade bloc. The agreement, which went into force January 1, 1994, calls for the reduction or elimination of most trade barriers between the three countries. In this video, I'll talk about the reasons why the Mexican government was interested in creating this trade bloc and some of the major provisions of the agreement. In follow-up videos, I'll explore the effects of NAFTA on the Mexican economy. Before 1987, the U.S. and Mexico had no formal agreement that governed trade between the two countries. In November of that year, they signed an agreement to address trade disputes as well as bring down trade barriers. Two years later, an additional legal framework was established which would seek to expand cross-border trade and investment. In 1990, the Mexican government formally broached the idea with the U.S. of forming a free trade area. So what is a free trade agreement, and why was Mexico interested in signing one with the U.S. and Canada? A free trade agreement is a legal arrangement between at least two countries that eliminates tariff and non-tariff barriers on the trade of goods and services. If you recall from the videos on the debt crisis, the 1980s are often referred to as the lost decade for Latin American countries. Mexico was no exception. The country suffered from increasing poverty, slow growth, and a high debt burden. Signing a free trade agreement would likely bring down inflation, given the increased competition from imported goods. And having duty-free access to the large U.S. and Canadian markets would expand trade possibilities and perhaps increase the productivity of domestic manufacturers and their ability to export in international markets. Government officials argued that the agreement would also bring increased foreign investment in the country, which could increase the country's technological sophistication as well as raising wages and reducing poverty. Finally, signing NAFTA was good PR for Mexico. Policymakers were eager to erase Mexico's image of a bankrupt, poverty-stricken nation and instead craft a new image of a dynamic, emerging economy deserving of investor attention. What were some of the key provisions of NAFTA? Well, NAFTA called for the immediate removal of tariffs on 70% of U.S. imports from Mexico and 50% of Mexican imports of U.S. goods. Other duties were scheduled to be reduced gradually over a 15-year period. Mexico was to stop its import licensing system, where manufactured goods could only be imported with the OK of the government. U.S. firms were also given access to almost all service sectors, and U.S. foreign direct investment and intellectual property rights were now protected in Mexico. Other issues included the elimination of export subsidies, where governments tried to give their domestic manufacturers a leg up in international competition through various measures, including low-interest loans, tax breaks, easy access to foreign exchange, NAFTA has also tried to harmonize quality standards, dictating that when one country applies a grading or classification standard to its own goods, it will provide at least as favorable of a classification for imported goods. Reducing trade barriers on agriculture has proved to be one of the most sensitive issues, but as of January 1, 2008, all agricultural tariffs between the two countries have been phased out. One half of all agricultural trade in terms of value became duty-free when NAFTA was signed. Other tariffs were slowly phased out. Another issue that needs addressing in a free trade agreement is origin rules. Because countries in a free trade bloc don't have identical external tariffs, then other countries can try to exploit this loophole to get around trade barriers. For example, let's say that Mexico can export t-shirts into the U.S. duty-free. A Japanese company has tariffs added to the cost of their t-shirts when they export to the United States. To get around that tariff, they can manufacture their t-shirts in Mexico and sell them to the U.S. duty-free. That's okay as long as they are truly being manufactured in Mexico. The trouble starts when they are adding very little value to the product in Mexico and merely using it as a way around the tariff. Because of that, NAFTA has complicated and specific rules of origin about what counts as a Mexican t-shirt, to use our example again. That is, how much of the raw materials had to be produced in Mexico? How much of the manufacturing of the t-shirt had to take place in Mexico? More generally, the guideline is that goods not or originating from the United States, Mexico, or Canada must be significantly transformed or processed in one of those countries before they receive NAFTA's lower duties for shipment to one of the two other countries. There's a lot of information available about NAFTA on the web. The information in this video came from Ángeles Villarreal's NAFTA in the Mexican Economy, which was a 2010 Congressional Research Service report, as well as the United States Department of Agriculture uh, fact sheets about NAFTA.